What is up subscribers? We are in the RFG again today working on the 5.3 for the shit horse. This will be episode number two in our series of assembling an LS engine and today we're going to put the crank in. We took the uh, crank back to the car wash and we gave it another easy off treatment which a I'm just going over the crank right now with the razor blade, getting the rest of the dirt off the car wash couldn't get off. And Clayton is starting to put in the bearings into the block. These would be the main bearings. I think so. I hope they are. So. I hate I'm just, you know, there might be some newbies is watching this. Oh, he is. Fancy. Obviously, we cleaned everything here really well Look first. how new they are. Clayton as well blew out the uh, oil passages because this engine had a lot of crap in it. Once we get those put in and the crank cleaned up, then we'll uh, drop it in there and go from there. So I spent way too much time cleaning up this crank. It had a lot of baked on oil crud. So I went at it with a razor blade at first and then we took some of this green pad and went over it with that. You're the block's actual already. Assembly. Oh, actual yeah. assembly lube? Fancy. Maybe I should that then. Well, that's what you want to use for the bearings. Yeah. Yeah. Why would you use engine oil? I have assembly lube. You build engines up first, in here. First I heard of it. Right here. There we go. So the block is ready. Uh, the crank is ready. We're just cleaning everything up, lubing everything up. And we're going to drop it in place. It assembly lube is better to use in this situation because it stays on the bearing, right? Yeah. When we're not going to be starting it for a while. We have a clean rag? A month from now when we start it, it'll still be there and it won't have... Uh, you know, dripped away. These LS cranks are pretty reliable up to a thousand horsepower and beyond. People have pushed them a lot harder than that, but uh, they're definitely not the failing point. Most times they'll be the rods. This engine has the Gen 4 rods, which you can see right here. Beefier design. Once we get to those, I'll show you a Gen 3 rod to compare. This thing on the end here with all the teeth is your electro wheel. That's uh, what the crank sensor reads. Yeah. Easy as that. Now that we got the crank in there, we're gonna start putting the main caps on. We've went ahead already and cleaned out the uh, bolt holes here, made sure there's no crud in there, cleaned up the actual hardware itself. We're reusing the stock LS truck hardware in here. It might be a little tight going in. On these LS engines, there's four bolts here and then one on either side, the main cap holding them in. So I'm just going through and putting some engine oil on each bolt, making sure to put some also under the head here because that's going to be a surface that has friction against the top of the main cap. Clayton's tightening them down with the speed wrench. You want to tighten them evenly and we're going to torque them after this so you just want to snug them down with the speed wrench for convenience. Then we'll torque them, we'll torque them in a stage. Unlike the cam bearings, this is working out pretty good. The crank still turns. Nothing's messed up yet, guys. Not yet. <laughs> You could also use molly lube or a whole bunch of other stuff for putting the bolts in like this, but we're just using engine oil for now for this shit horse engine. 20 right to 60 or whatever? Well, it'd be a degree at that point. A degree? That's the, yes, that's but if the... we're not doing the degrees, that's what he's saying, then what do you go to? 60, you said. 58 to 63, he said. Yeah, so go about 65. So we're torquing down the main caps now. The description we found on the internet of how to do this properly by GM is to start with all the 13 millimeter pairs down to 16 foot pounds, working your way outwards in a spiral pattern, keeping forward thrust pressure on the crank while you're doing this if you want to get fancy. And then you also do the 15 millimeter bolts, the same in the spiral pattern to 16 foot pounds. And then, with a lot of these LS bolts, they have a degree that you have to use. Basically, you put a tool on there and then you turn it and you rotate it 80 degrees more after it's been torqued to the 16 foot-pounds kind of thing to get to you to your final torque. I don't like this fucking thing. <laughs> How dare you? Well, it's turning and it, the torque isn't increasing. Don't know how to work the bendy. But instead of using the degree wheel, because it's a pain, 
We've read that it's about 60 foot pounds, so we're gonna go to 65 foot pounds and everything should be good. Clayton disapproves of Bendy. No, I don't like it. It told me it doesn't like you, so I'm gonna go. Like, the torque is decreasing on that last one. That's something to do with the bolt installer, not the not the torque wrench. You should have brought your fucking fancy torque wrench. I didn't think that we'd get this far. It's See, I'm turning and it's not even, it's like decreasing. It's because you're slowing down. You got to give it a you gotta, you gotta. It's a bendy. It's not, you're not waiting for the click. No, I know. I'm waiting for it to get to 60. Yeah. So you pull Steady it to 60 and then you let off. Yeah. Like there. Yeah. You're this. probably letting the pressure off and you're blaming it on old, poor old bendy. Maybe I should wait until I get mine. I mentioned keeping the forward pressure on the crank, on the thrust. That's one thing you can definitely measure when you're putting in a crank if you want to be doing things the proper machinist type way. Yeah, we'll measure thrust. And thrust is basically the forward backward movement, but we are going to measure it. Oh, yeah. All right. Master build. And then 60 again on the other one? Uh, 55 there, recommended. We're going another 65 uh, because this thing is like zero to play. Once we're done torquing these, we'll do the uh, side bolts here, which get torqued down to 18 foot pounds. I don't know, I guess that's that. Feels light to me. Now we're gonna check the crankshaft thrust. This is uh, important if you want your engine to run. You can also have torque converter problems if this is off, right? Rob, your dial's like all oh, shitty. Clayton, I already told you that you said the same fucking thing last time. Your screws are backed out of the... Okay, whatever, it's a piece of shit. Throw it in the garbage, I don't really care. Well, I wanna use it. Fuck, I don't know what to tell you. The procedure here is pretty simple. You uh, set the dial indicator to zero. Move the crankshaft, measure the thrust. There's uh bitches about everything for five <laughs> Well, what good is a tool if it doesn't do its job? It works perfectly fine. You just gotta know how to use it. There's a lot of different specs out there for different motors, what people recommend, all that kind of stuff. You'll have to do your own research. Well, find your own answers for that. Try here a bit. Was that three and a half there? Yeah. Two. So five, five, five and a half, six now. That seems good. <laughs> I don't know what it's supposed to be. I don't know. We'll have to look up the specs on the internet. I just did a quick Google search and a lot of stuff came like up. Six so. to ten thousand or something. Like yeah. That. All right. So we did a little Google search, and uh, the internet seemed to say between three and eight thousandths is the GM spec, and we're at about six. So uh, right where it should be. Mm-hmm. Definitely yeah. went a lot smoother than the cam bearing episode. Yeah. So uh, that's about it for the crank install. I'm trying to think, is there anything else we can tell newbie people about cranks and newbie installing people? them? Newbie this is the first one I've done. Tell yeah, me. right. <laughs> We've installed some cranks. Uh, an LS, I guess. For Clayton's first LS. Sounds like a storybook. This could be an SBE new uh, record holder about him in here. New, okay. new shit horse record holder. <laughs> All right guys, so that's about it for this one. The crankshaft is installed in the engine. Uh, something to keep in mind with the crankshafts and the bearings. You wanna make sure everything is very clean, very lubed up. Spinning a bearing is a bad thing. That causes engine failure for you newbie people. You might've heard that term before, spinning a bearing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm running out of things to say, but there's not much else to say about installing a crank. Yeah. Spins well, like I just spun two bearings. I guess that's the... Uh, oh. The assembly loop making noise. There we go. Hopefully. So that's it for this episode of the Shit Horse Engine Assembly. Next time we'll be back putting the uh, rods and pistons in there. Right? That's next? Pistons and rods. Pistons and rods. 
So until then, guys, make sure to like, share, subscribe as always, and we'll check you later. Bye.